Hey, my name is Jake, and I'll be presenting the security problems of an 11-year-old and how to solve them. So first, I'll just tell you a bit about me. Well, obviously, I'm 11, and in the fifth grade, I started coding when I was about five. And since then, I've done a bunch of online university courses in Python programming, computer networking, etc. And uh, I presented at PyCon Canada 2015 and at the Montreal Python Group, and I'm really happy to be here today. So I started by making a threat model. So the first threat is that your sibling takes over your laptop and web accounts. The second, that hackers take over your cloud server. The third, that your dad implements internet filtering. And the fourth, that your dad programs your Wi-Fi to turn off at 7.30 p.m. each night. <laughs> my dad has actually done three and four. My sister try keeps trying number one. And of course, the hackers of the world not want nothing more than my cloud server. So for the first threat that your sibling tells you, of your laptop and web accounts. The solutions here are fairly straightforward. You use strong passwords for Windows, your bank, etc. Use a one minute screen lock because siblings can be fast. And use a password manager with hardware based device ID, strong biometrics, and multi factor authentication. And uh, the best one's the one built in Montreal by those guys. <laughs> So uh, for the second threat that hackers take over your cloud server, again, fairly straightforward. You always maintain all server software up to date, allow SSH access only, disallow root login, disallow password authentication, use ED25519 keys, and set a strong password on your SSH key. So for the third threat that my dad limits my internet access, this one, took a little longer. So in my house, some sites are filtered. I try and access perfectly harmless sites like Snapchat, and I get a block page. This is obviously a violation of my basic human rights. So first, I needed to figure out how it works. So here's some evidence I gathered. This is a DNS query for snapshot.com using the default DNS resolver allocated by DHCP in my house. And it returns 146.112.61.106. This is the same query, but using 8.8.8.8, .8 which is a Google run public DNS resolver. And the results are completely different. So what I figured out is that all DNS as queries for filtered sites return 146.112.61.106. This turned out to be the block IP address of the block page of the OpenDNS filtering service. So a router is resolving via OpenDNS, and Evil Dad has configured nasty filters. OK, so I figured out how it works. Now I need to figure out how to circumvent it. My first idea was to configure my laptop to use a static DNS resolver, not the one assigned by DHCP. So it has some pros and some cons. It's easy, and it would work. But one tiny problem, I don't have administrative solutions on my laptop, so I can't do it. OK. Um, so my second idea was to hack my laptop to get administrative permissions to perform idea one, the static DNS resolver. So again, it has some pros and some cons. It would work, but I don't know how yet, and my dad might be mad. So uh, next. So my third idea was to add sites to the host file. This would work, but it's fairly tedious. You have to dig each site and then add it to the file. But aside from that, everything was going perfectly. I digged all my stuff. I added it to the file. 
Uh, well, I found the ridiculous location Windows keeps the file. But when I tried to save it, I got an error message because I don't have the correct file permissions. I can read it, but I cannot write to it. So foiled again, again. So my fourth idea, I realized that I do have a Linux VM with admin rights, so I can perform idea one, the static DNS resolver, on my VM. So this is easy and it works, but I figured out that on my old laptop, surfing in the VM is slow and clumsy, so there must be a better way. No. My fifth and final idea was to set up a proxy server on my cloud server and configure my browser to use it. This should work, and there's no VM, and it might take a while to set up, but it w should work fine. So it looks like this will be the best solution. So I decided to use Tiny Proxy because it's small, fast, and light, so it runs on my tiny little $15 for life cloud server. And it's already in the Ubuntu repository, so installing it is fairly simple. And uh, installing it was uneventful other than forgetting to type sudo the first time. <laughs> but it didn't work. My proxy server was refusing connections. So it turned out all I had to do was go into the tinyproxy.conf file and tell it to allow connections from the external IP address of my laptop, the IP address of my NAT gateway. And uh, after that, it worked fine. So one point for me, zero points for daddy. Um, so, okay, I win that one. Next challenge. My Wi-Fi turns off at 7.30 p.m. each night. I haven't solved this one yet, but I have some ideas. I could drill a hole in the wall and run a surreptitious Ethernet cable into my room. I could find a way to use the other non-timed Wi-Fi network. I could hack the router clock, or I could hit the router with a stick and hope for the best. So obviously, I'm still working on this one, and I'll be happy to accept any suggestions you guys might have. <laughs> so thanks for listening to me, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys might have.